any uh, anyone to you know have any question on estimate estimate activity duration here no okay it's a simple enough right okay now let me take you to the you know <clears throat> actual uh, you know uh, process group where we do these processes estimate activity durations the inputs are the various management plan schedule management plan and scope baseline schedule management plan here we are trying to attach schedule to the actual uh, task list over item or activities and then scope baseline is trying to understand how are the resources working on the scope so whenever we try to achieve scope how much these resources will take a time on average okay and this is quite proportional to the complexity this is quite proportional to the even the way of working like today we are working in remote so the efficiency uh, is reduced uh, up to a certain extent and that's how industry can share with you how this scope based line can be updated modified for a given number of uh, you know task for a given uh, type of work as well the various project document we considered as an input to activity activity durations are of course the activity attributes because whatever we have uh, think it through prior to this uh, we will try to collect them and this includes uh, the activity itself the complexity of the activity the normal dependencies of activity in between themselves and then the resource which we could attach or work to for these activity attributes then this list of activity as uh, we discussed earlier i'll repeat again list of activity can be a simple excel sheet where we uh, jot down the attributes across different columns so let's say if i have activity like uh, activity list like uh, team b will go to bloomington state farm office try to install these five biometric uh, instruments on their door and integrate it with the actual solution on the cloud right it's a simple you know uh, what you can say group of tasks we are assigned to a team of four or five with those biometric uh, needs to be installed there these are the third party company so what will what all they do they will carry these biometrics they will have their attributes or uh, they will have their activity list with the attributes with themselves and prior to you know their departure from our office we might basically try to understand estimate activity duration where we have estimated this activity for let's say 18 hours so it's like kind of three business days again some companies 6 hours a day some companies 8 hours a day so depending upon your organizations where you are working we normally plan such activities for these guys and we also include uh, the unit testing part of it the quality check uh, the initial quality check part of it and even most of the scenario if it's a remote work we might uh, you know uh, send the q um, sorry qc engineer with them as well to make sure he completes all the quality control checks which are required to make sure that application or that part of deployment is complete then of course we have assumption log just to make sure if we are assuming anything uh, in advance we are if we are trying to assume anything from our side from client side from environmental side or what not right and so we normally try to assign these assumptions to address where we try to understand if there are any risk which are basically worth mentioning worth uh, recalibrating uh, worth uh, damaging my project efficiency then there are license run register <clears throat> from the uh, similar task i did earlier my project team did earlier or my any organizational team did, did earlier i'll try to understand i'll try to calibrate the efficiencies accordingly okay then i move to something like milestone list as we discussed earlier we try to uh, you know pull out some uh, task alignments in terms of milestones this task will complete on so and so day at so and so time and that next task will ta start and these are allocated to the similar resources or the same resources to be precise so that they can keep continuing their work for the uh, you know given part of day for the given part of the sprint and that's how these milestone list give me a clear idea or if um, uh, if the project is lacking for any particular task i might take a help of sme coe or the expert judgment as the pmi normally dictates then we have 
project team assignments. Now, this is what we call uh, resource alignments, or we attach resource to the given task list, given activity list, or given work item list. And then we have resource breakdown section. This clearly aligns with the overall, uh, you know, uh, resource distribution across the task. Can we have resource, uh, you know, align in terms of if uh, one might fall ill or if one's efficiency is not at peak, who else can support him or her and those kind of scenarios. And then we have resource calendar as well. Any planned leaves and all those things are already considered in my project plan. Then resource requirement. If we have any additional resource required for these tasks, I might proactively process it with the resource management team. Uh, one uh, particular thing to be understood PMI, Kandi Milan, all these institutes, they believe that resource manager is an external to your project team because the resource manager doesn't report to the project manager. And that's why whatever resource you're going to need, you're going to process with him on proactive basis. So if you need your resource on you know, uh, so-and-so date, let's say uh, 28th of May, then I need to start that resource request processing from 28th, 22nd, 24th, or you know, 25th, whatever the time it takes to get the resource on board. Now, resource on board means start actual the resource on with your project team. Now, these type of proactive resource requirements as a project manager, I need to process. And that's why the resource requirements are a kind of crucial item for estimate activity duration in case if I need additional resources, if there are any special risk of uh, either, you know, uh, efficiency reductions or resource taking a leave or you know resource might be sick and those kind of scenario i plan an extra resources um, to make sure uh, i will handle such risk uh, with a good efficiency throughout the project then of course a risk register whatever we assume we normally mention a risk against that assumptions or even if there are any additional risk like, uh, you know, as we discussed, the task of uh, going from St. Louis to Bloomington. Bloomington is in, uh, you know, say around uh, 80 or miles from St. Louis to install those four myometric, as we normally discuss in our um, project example, right? Me uh, and the team working for Infosys, we are doing a project for State Farm Insurance Agency to enhance their attendance management solution. So there, there are four teams who are going from St. Louis to Bloomington to install these four biometric machines at their doorstep and integrate all those things together so that we can see the attendance record on the cloud from the uh, release date deployment. Date. And that's how I plan these tasks. That's how I normally estimate activity duration and schedule this task for a given number of days with a given number of resources. If there are any risks like environment leaves, environment leaves, tornado, uh, snow, heat wave, um, all such challenges as a risk, I'll try to analyze before I task, uh, start this task. So that in case if I need anything extra in terms of resources, it can be something like snowmobile, snowmobile. it can be something like, you know, uh, special understanding of uh, uh, the weather, special understanding of if there are any challenges in transport and all those things i'll make sure those things are addressed before we start this task okay so there are a number of inputs as far as estimate activity duration because whenever you try to estimate activity durations these number of hours just don't come from half well they can be gut feeling sometime but most of the time we will try to understand are they relevant? Are they justified? When Ravindra says he'll take six hours for a given task, given number of tasks. So in those scenario, as a project manager, I'm been working with Ravindra for let's say three years. So I know when he says six hours, he might get uh, it done within five. He just need one hour to basically do the quality checks and everything. So I'm fine with whatever solution he has given to me. And that's how we normally work on an estimate activity duration. Estimate activity duration. Of course, there are enterprise environment factor and organizational process assets to help us out to build the best possible efficiency throughout this year. Okay. Any questions on inputs of estimate activity duration? 
No. Then we go to the tools and techniques. Here, uh, these tools and techniques, we're going to learn about the estimation way of it. But let's start to understand first what all it covers. It covers the COE, SMEs type of, you know, experts who can basically either help us to build the estimation if you are doing it for the first time, or they are there in an advisory capacity or a reviewer capacity to make sure whatever estimate I have planned for a given uh, set of tasks, given sprint, um, they are going to review it and they're going to give their green, give their, you know, agreement for the estimate we have uh, created for a given sprint, given number of tasks, given number of work items as per our project planning. Okay, so this is a normal process. In some organizations, these review are formal. In some organizations, these review are informal. But yes, some way or the other, we normally uh, review the plans which are created by the project manager. Then we have a couple of estimation methodologies like analogous estimation, parametric estimating, three-point estimating, and bottom-up estimating. We'll have a look at these estimating, you know, next slide and all. But let's try to understand here, these are the couple of scientific, scientific way as per the PMI to do the estimation. Even after understanding from the resource uh, with his complete dedication to the task, I might review this estimation with these techniques or one of these techniques to make sure I'm in line with the estimation or I'm top of, you know, whatever I'm planning, it has been validated, verified as well. Now this data analysis or a decision making or alternative analysis kind of scenarios where if there are any alternatives to a given task at hand in terms of either procurement a third party or build a you know item in house or any such type of such decision have to be initiated have to be taken we we'll use some you know alternative analysis or reserve analysis type of techniques to make sure whatever we choose in terms of decision making or data analysis part of it, they are supported with the artifacts and done scientifically or done with the very experienced persons. And that's how we can rely on those uh, you know, decisions, those alternatives we have chosen to make sure our project will be uh, progressing with the best possible efficiencies. And then of course, as a project manager, we might plan quite a few meetings in getting this estimate duration uh, attached to the task as an attribute. The task name is the only list normally we carry forward. And then we normally have all these things, even the estimate activity duration as an attribute. Okay. And that's how uh, we normally call it as an attribute updates to the tasks. The outputs are, of course, the duration of estimates, basis of estimates uh, in the scenario what type of estimation methodologies have you followed? And you normally stick to the one estimate methodology throughout your project. So that's why we normally keep referring what type of estimation methodologies have we started, have we following for a given project, given institutions. The project documents updates are activity attributes as we just discussed. Whenever we zero down or whenever we confirm the activity durations, we normally update it as an attribute for a given task list, for a item list, or an activity list. Then, of course, if there are any additional assumptions, I might add it to the assumption logs and try to understand if these can, uh, you know, procreate any risk additionally to be added to the risk register or not. And then we have lessons learned register. If I'm trying to adopt to my older best practices, which are which were there from the lessons learned register or if I have updated some processes to make sure I execute the project with some better efficiency, I might release, uh, release these thought processes, these new learnings to the lessons learned register, the knowledge archival system of my organization so that even others can get benefited from it. Okay, so this is how I progress in terms of estimate activity duration. Any questions so far? We are just going to learn or understand how analogous parametric three point or bottom sub estimating is actually happened at process. So, any questions on estimate activity duration here? No, oh, sir. Okay, no problem. Thanks, thanks for that. Let me move to the first two uh, type of estimating 
methodologies, let's try to understand. Analog is, uh, analogous estimating is a technique for estimating the duration of a, or a cost of an activity or a project using historical data from a similar activity or project. So what we do, as we uh, you know, understood, there is a good amount of knowledge archival at a given organization. So if you have done any similar project in the past, I normally try to uh, you know, build my estima estimations based on those historical actual work. And that's how I normally give uh, activity duration for a given activity task work item. Analogous estimate, uh, estimating uses parameter from previous build project, such as duration, budget site, weight, complexity, as the basis of estimating the same parameter or a major of a future project. Now, this is how we keep progressing, keep adding this knowledge to the knowledge archive system in a scenario where whatever we did a similar task earlier with the similar parameters within my organizations, I use those estimating numbers to be applied to my given task as well so that I learn from history, right? And these are specifically the project history. I learn from my experience as well. And these are personal experience. And we'll come to that in a minute. But first and foremost, the analogous estimating is basically referring the task estimate with the similar historical data. If you don't have similar historical data, we're going to just see what we are going to do next. But otherwise, if you have similar historical data, and you can then choose the process of analogous estimating for such project. Then there's something called parametric estimating. Parametric estimating is an estimating technique in which algorithm is used to calculate the cost or duration based on historical data and project parameters. Now here, we are trying to basically take a step further, not just the historical data, but the project parameters also. Now these project parameters are the parameters like remote working, actual uh, you know, on-site working, or uh, you know mm, any challenges in terms of uh, or a, any obstacles which uh, are coming constantly in uh, you know redu reducing my efficiency throughout my project. How can I address them? Or if I am good able to address them or not, and those kind of scenarios. Of course, historical data also plays an important part here. So parametric and analogous estimation. These estimating uh, methodologies are based on mostly historical data, where we normally tend to understand how much similar tasks in a similar project have taken for me to complete or taken for uh, uh, you know, an average level of resources to complete. Or if we can calibrate it according to the resource level, number of experience level, I might do it much better and so on and so forth. The parametric estimating, estimating uses a statistical relationship between historical data and other variables like square footage construction, like, you know, the square footage construction techniques is used if you're trying to build a building. All these civil contractors, if you know any, or if you're by yourself, they know. They normally go for a baseline like square footage construction. How much a square foot of construction take for them, then they'll consider how much 300 square foot of construction for them, and so on and so forth. In software, we have lines of code or function point in such scenarios. And we'll discuss about that uh, in a couple of slides. But right now, let's try to understand. To calculate an estimate or activity parameter, such as cost, budget, or duration, we might use something like square footage construction. And this is something like historical data also. This is, this is basically historical data, like how much time we took last time we did similar projects, similar work. And that's how we normally calibrate our latest uh, activity attributes in on those lines. Okay. Any questions on analogous and parametric estimating right now? No. Okay. Other than these, today's world, we normally use line of code or kilo line of code in software or function point estimation. Yeah whenever we do manufacturing or software industry. The line of code is basically pertains to 
how much lines of code does this functionality, does this modules need? So if you are looking at say around 2000 line of code, then there are baselines given at industry level for Java, for core Java, we normally take 180 lines of code per day of productivity. For .NET, we might take 210 lines of code per day per resource activity of a more than three years experience resource and so on and so forth. So like this uh, kind of industry standard, we apply for our estimating whenever we try to estimate with, uh, you know, uh, something like square footage construction type of thought process or methodology to be applied specifically in parametric estimate. In analogous, we normally rely on just the similar project or similar work we did earlier uh, with our organizations and we normally carry forward those number to make sure our even current uh, activity estimation is in line with those, uh, you know, uh, work periods or uh, those schedules as well. Let me move on to the next slide and let's try to understand the, uh, you know, three point estimate. So what we do here, here we are trying to use some uh, formulas and based on, uh, we normally average out the uh, estimation given by the resources. And this can be something like a gut feel aggregated to the practical practicability, but yes, more or less, it's a kind of gut feel or from the resources experience, as we say. The accuracy of single point duration estimate may be improved by considering the estimation at uh, uncertainty and risk. When you talk about single point estimation, and these are talking about the analogous or parametric, but in three point estimation, we are considering three different points here. Let's try to understand how using three point estimate helps define an approximate range for an activity duration. So I'll basically consider a task or an activity, and I'll check with resources how much, you know, this activity can be, you know, a prolonged or uh, might take to complete. And based on the expense level, dependencies, uh, participants, uh, understanding, maturity, interruptions, we normally take three estimates, most likely optimistic and pessimistic. Now the estimate based on the duration of activity given the resources likely to be assigned, their productivity, elastic uh, expectation of availability for the activity depends on other participants and interruptions also. So whenever I check with, let's say I call Ravindra, he say Ravindra, you need to complete these six tasks. Now could you please give me most likely optimistic and pessimistic uh, estimations uh, based on your experience? So yes, Ravindra say, okay. For activity A, one hour. For activity B, 1.5. For activity C, one hour. For activity D, uh, two hours, and so on and so forth. So this way, I create a most likely estimation list. I create an optimist estimation list. I create a pessimistic estimation list. Pessimistic in a scenario where a kind of worst case scenario I'm talking about. And optimistic are the best case scenario for a given activity estimation. Depending upon on the assume the distribution of the values within this range of three estimate, the expected estimate or PE can be calculated. The commonly used formula is triangular distribution. So we just average out between these two. Triangular distribution is used when there's insufficient historical data or when using judgmental data. Duration of estimate based on three points with an estimated distribution, provide an expected duration and clarify the range of uncertainty around the expected duration. What does this mean? Normally, three-point estimating is much better than the analogous or parametric estimate. Okay, so these type of estimating, again, all the organizations have their own, uh, you know, preferences for even they use such kind of estimation. But normally in today's world, as we discussed, we have more of a LOC or a function point kind of estimations in the software or manufacturing industries. Okay, in manufacturing industries, the LOC can be calculated as a number of items we can produce by the given robotic arm or by the given uh, work line. They call work line as a production line, those kind of things, right? Uh, any, any questions on three point estimating? Again, if you're given PMI exam, then only this is a need. Otherwise, 
you can just right away forget this. Mostly uh, in a practical scenario, the project manager normally check with the resources. Hey, Ravindra, what do you think? How much time will take? And Ravindra do all these type of estimation if he feels right for. Otherwise, he'll just say, yeah, uh, these total activities might take, uh, you know, six hours, eight hours, just mentioned there. And in the attribute column, he also mentions, okay, Ravindra's uh, experience tells him that these activity will take so many hours. And that's the way we normally go forward on to the next level of task or uh, to the next resources. Okay, okay. Does anybody have any question on three point estimating as of now? No. No. No problem. I'll move forward. The bottoms of estimating. This is again a simple estimating thought process. Let's try to understand. Bottoms of estimating is a method of estimating project duration or the cost by aggregating the estimate of lower level components of the WPS. Now here again, uh, this is a more practical way. We create a WPS. We have created the WPS, right? Previously. Now with that WPS, what we do at the last level of task, we think how much time it will take. Like we discussed, right? In our WPS, the nth level task where we try to understand survey the land. In survey the land, I have a couple of task missions. Uh, take measure of soil moisture, take measure of soil hardness, take measure of soil stress levels, or the Greek, uh, you know, it has for those concretes or columns or something like that. So there are three or four such activity I have planned. Now I can clearly understand how much time the soil moisture uh, calculation is going to take. It takes around three minutes. If you, you know, plug a soil with that machine, and the machine normally displays this exact soil moisture to you within two, three minutes. So the total process can be take, uh, can take anything from 10 minutes or so, as simple as that. Then the other process, similarly, I can estimate. And these are based on WBS. So these are the kind of last entity of the WBS. So for a group task, I'll just add up all these WBS last items and try to estimate the main task in a given W. And that's how we keep doing. Uh, when an activity duration cannot be estimated with a reasonable degree of confidence, the work within the activity is decomposed into more detail and the detailed durations are estimated. Yes, this is the way WBS functions exactly. And again, these are specifically for the senior resources who have done the similar task earlier so that they can estimate with more practicability. These estimates are aggregated into a total quantity for each of the activity durations. Activities may or may not have dependencies between them that can affect application and use of resources. If there are dependencies, this pattern of resource usage is reflected and documented in the estimated requirements of activity. So if there are uh, any dependencies, I might look at that schedule and then try to uh, reflects if any delays or leads or lags in my current schedule as well. And that's how I keep building these uh, bottoms of estimations um, from a, you know, a well-known process called WS. And this is what we followed on quite a few actual practical projects. Does that make sense to you? Any questions on bottoms of estimating? Okay, let me play a okay. video. Yeah, let me play a video for you, and then we'll understand, uh, you know, uh, from uh, you know some other trainer how this bottom sub estimation is basically uh, helping us out. To, uh, how these uh, you know uh, three different estimating techniques are helping us out. Come on, give me a minute, please. Hello, welcome back. Uh, let me share the video for you. Oh, come on. 